here in this room is a will. Legend says that a crystal skull was stolen from a mythical lost city in the Amazon. Supposedly built out of solid gold, guarded by the living dead. Whoever returns the skull to the city temple will be given control over. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Mystery Vault podcast. I'm your host RJ McCready and for this episode I'm going to be taking a look at Crystal Skulls. And also to mention a shout out to my good friend and listener Darren Randall who actually uh, asked me if I could do this episode. He put it down as a listener request so uh, here I am. And if I'm honest with you, I'm going to say this straight away. I've, I've known about Crystal Skulls, you know, I've seen, seen it in the books and... Um, I've gone, hey, that's a crystal skull, that's great. Um, I've heard, briefly heard the stories of where they've been found, the Mitchell Hedges skull, but I've never really looked into it properly like I have now. And to be honest with you, it's actually kind of blown my mind a little bit because there's no, it's actually quite inconclusive to try and get to the root of where these skulls came from. And I've literally researched it and I've come away and I thought, let's have a look at that again. And I've come away and I made some notes and it's kind of like, well, I suppose I guess that's what makes the mystery itself. You kind of sort of, I was sort of left there thinking, have I got enough here to do this episode? And I don't really feel like I've got to the root of this. And I guess that is the mystery itself. And I guess that's what researchers and scientists have tried to prove up until now. So it's kind of like where it's left me. So I thought I'd mention that at the beginning. So what I'm going to do with this episode is kind of... uh, I'm going to use what what I've found and tell you guys, you know, a little bit of what I think. And I've got a few f- a few facts here with, you know, wh- where people think these skulls came from. Um, but let's get into this. So let's start with like just a little bit of a synopsis here. So the crystal skull itself is it's a beautiful thing. It's like a beautiful piece of artwork. It's made of clear uh, or milky quartz. Uh, like a rock crystal, claim to be Colombian Mesoamerican artifacts, and they've got all this. They they got connections to like the paranormal. Some people say that they're like they can they can um, tell the future if you look at them long enough, or um, they can predict uh, death, the supernatural, the occult. Um, some people believe that they come from the ancient city of Atlantis, which is another episode which I'm going to look into. And also the prophecy stuff is another episode which I'll look into as well, which is the Nostradamus type stuff as well, which I'll get into. Um, but uh, you've also got, apart from the supernatural on the Atlantis, you've obviously got aliens as well, ETs. Dare I say it, they always come into the mystery world, don't they, the the ETs. So that kind of stems into the uh, Mesoamerican artifacts and that ancient civilization as well. So let's have a quick look at the uh, Mesoamerican, just give you a quick rundown on that. So that is a historical region of the northern areas of America. And you've got uh, Central America, Belize, Guad- uh, God, got to try and pronounce this, uh, Guatemala, uh, El Salvador, Honduras, and Costa Rica. And in those areas, you've had ancient independent civilizations which reigned for thousands of years before the um, colonization of the Spanish uh, conquest in the 16th century and these pre-Columbian societies they flourished and you had the Toltec culture the Mayans and the Aztecs and today you can visit these locations I visited one of them which was the Chichen Itza uh, in Mexico 
beautiful, absolutely amazing. And you can see all the uh, step pyramids. And where, when you go and visit, well, when I visited this location, I mean, this, this is something I'm into as well because I love all my Indiana Jones stuff of anybody that knows me. Um, <laughs> I just needed me uh, fedora and the whip and all that sort of stuff. Um, but you really did get that sort of feel as if you've, you've gone back in time and there was this kind of like... <sighs> It felt a little bit spooky in some ways because they had um, walls made of skulls and there was sacrifice, um, go sacrificial things going on there. They had death matches, sports where they chop people's heads off and throw them through hoops and all that sort of stuff. Interesting conversations I had there as well with, with a, uh, one of the um, curators. And I'll never forget this, and it's, it kind of ties in with this episode. Is like there was a stone structure with it, it may have had like a a human body and a skull on it. And I I said I remember saying to him, "Well, what's that?" And he came back to me and he said, "Ah," he said, "Those are the things that the scientists and the people who have researched this place that don't necessarily want to tell you." And I was like. Oh, really? And then then we moved on because I was like part of a tour guide. And I'd, I'd never forget what he said there. I was thinking, oh, right, so is there things in this place that we don't fully understand or there's some information that's been withheld? But that goes into the whole conspiracy thing. But uh, I think what I'm trying to say here is to try and get your mind into this crystal skull and to think, you know, what that artifact can be. I think sometimes you need to just go off the road a little bit and think about the plausibilities and stuff like that and I think that's why <laughs> kind of going off into a tangent here is why people come up with these amazing theories of these ancients to you know you get the um, astronaut theorists and ancient aliens and all that sort of stuff and again that's going to be an episode I'll look into with um, the chariots of the gods that's right that, that one i'll do an episode on that but you can sort of see why when you look at the crystal skull people could say well maybe it is plausible maybe the ancient civilizations did have this as um like a, a type of religious or supernatural artifact so to to try and understand it, I think you need to try and get your mind into that sort of realm. And, you know, already I'm talking about this and it, it leads you into a sort of another world, another time, mysteries, possibilities, um, and I suppose a world that we still don't know, we don't totally know what they, they were doing in that part of the world in that time, but what they were, were very advanced and I think that's what gets us, you know... It, you go into how did they build the pyramids? Why were they building pyramids? How come the um, the Egyptians were building pyramids, but they never met each other? So it starts going into those rooms, which I'll, which I'll get into with the, um, like I say, the chariots, the gods episode. But going back to the the skull, so um, the they do say that there are thirteen altogether, and supposedly it, let's just say that this story is true. People say they're from Atlantis, uh, the lost civilization. Um, some people say that it was the aliens that brought it down, brought these crystal skulls down to the ancient civilizations to teach us technologies, and the skulls themselves contain this information. Hence, the reason why you get these uh, supernatural powers. And with the the Atlantis tale, um, there are tales of people thinking that the ancient civilizations in America are the remnants from Atlantis so that kind of like ties it up and that the skulls were the information like the computers to try and aid them with um, their their building of the pyramids and their civilization which you know like as I'm talking the only way I can try and explain this is as if it was true so imagine if that was true and that did happen and the crazy thing with this is as well is that uh, scientists today, when they've looked at these skulls and the crystals, they now use crystal technology for computers and they reckon that computers do generate a electrical impulse. So this, these stories that come from like the late 18th, early 19th centuries, 
they do actually tie into that with modern technology, which kind of throws this all together in, in a way. But just moving on there, so you've got this this story, 13 Skulls, Atlantis, Aliens, the Ancient Civilization. So let's move on to the actual skulls themselves and the ones that we have. So there, there are uh, three or four in existence that have been around for a while. Uh, there's the famous Mitchell Hedges skull, which I'll get into in a minute. You've got the skull that's in the British Museum, which was donated to the museum by a collector via Tiffany's, and the collector believed that he or there's they believe that these, this skull originated from Mexico. But again, the uh, information on that, again, it's always inconclusive. No, nothing really set in stone. Uh, no pun there at all. <laughs> um, you've got the Paris crystal skull, again, donated by a collector. And you've got the Smith Smithosian crystal skull in America, which is the United States National Institute uh, museum. Now that skull is a mystery itself because apparently it was it was gifted to them via um, the post from an, someone anonymous. But still, they it is you know I think it's a it's a milky uh, quartz or something like that, which um, does tie up with the other skulls in the other museums. So they're the ones that they've got. These are the ones that they've they've checked out. Scientists have had a look at them to see how they've been made. And again, it's still all inconclusive. But let's get on to the very famous one, the one which I will concentrate on uh, today. It's the Mitchell Hedges skull. And I'm sure most of you are aware of that. Um, it's the one that turns up, um, again, the when you see like the old Arthur C. Clarke doc documentaries and books, you see the crystal skull on the front of it. So the Mitchell Hedges, uh, now F.A. Hedges, the actual adventurer himself, was like um, a real Indiana Jones. And he's he's actually worthy of, an, of his own episode for this show, actually, because he is a hell of a guy. So let's give you a quick rundown of what he's done in his life. So his full name is Frederick Albert Mitchell Hedges. He was an English adventurer, traveller, writer. At the age of 16, he dropped out of school and took his first trip to Norway and had uh, high hopes of becoming an explorer, which he ended up doing. Uh, in his early years of exploration, he had adventures in Central America and Mexico and he had a very had a growing interest in the lost city of Atlantis. That was like his his theory, that's what he was setting out for. He had this uh, burning desire to go and look for lost civilizations and I think Atlantis was generally what he was going out for. But he did find a lost city on the Mosquito Coast. It was called the Cradle of Civilization. And he stated that the Bay Islands of Honduras were the remnants of the lost city of Atlantis, which kind of ties into this, the, the Crystal Skull, which is a place where he spent a, a lot of time. And during this time, he, he married his wife Lillian, and they uh, adopted uh, their daughter, which is Anne-Marie Mitchell Hedges, is very significant to this case. And then in the 1930s, he would later go on to just settle down a little bit, but he created this like radio show uh, in New York City, which was about uh, his jungle adventures. So he's running a, a, an Indiana Jones type radio show where he would talk about um, lost cities and animal attacks and, like I say, adventures in the jungle. So he was an interesting guy. And what's important to mention here, and what I was really surprised with, with him, with him being an explorer and all the adventures and the lost civilizations that he found, I was just waiting to see that somewhere in this research, I was just looking for the word archaeologist, but he never was. He, was, he wasn't a, he wasn't an archaeologist. He, he didn't really record stuff. He was a guy that said, "Look, if, if you want to find something, I think it's a quote that." Indiana Jones says, you know, don't go into the library. Get out there on the field and roll your sleeves up and go and find it. And that's the type of guy that he was. He was a very sort of, he was a he was a swashbuckler. He 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 said if you're gonna find if you want to find something, get in the jungle, walk around and you'll come across it. 
which uh, which is important, I guess, again, for this story which I'm leading up to, is that he wasn't a guy that recorded stuff necessarily. He'd, he'd want to get into the temple, get that stick of dynamite, blow up the door and get in there and find, find out what's inside. But for an archaeologist, that's probably a nightmare because that's blowing up all the evidence. But in the, in the early 1920s, he... He wasn't necessarily like a, a grave robber or anything like that as such, but he was like rolled up sleeves, let's get, let's get this job done. And in the research that I've done, I think that's quite an important thing to mention here with this story is that when it comes to the crystal skull, he didn't actually, whether he found it or not, there was no record during this this time when when he was in Honduras, for him writing down, hey, I found a crystal skull and I've done a drawing of it and I've properly recorded it and all that sort of stuff. So that's kind of like a building block to when you try to work out the origins of the skull and whether it actually came into the possession of F.A. Mitchell. So uh, I've mentioned Honduras. Uh, this was a place that he, a, a lost city that he found uh, called Lubantu in 1927. Uh, he was funded for this expedition, and what he did find, he did pass over to uh, the correct people as such. Uh, he says that he didn't find an awful lot. It was probably blown up with all the dynamite, <laughs> which I'm sure the archaeologists were sort of <laughs> in fury about at the time, I'm sure. But um, he, he did find this city, and... Before I move on to, to Anna, who said that she was there at the time, Mitchell didn't actually make any recordings to say that his daughter was there as well during this time of the expedition. Uh, nor did he say that um, he came. Did he say that he, look, I've come across a crystal skull and here it is? The only time that he's mentioned the skull is in 1954 in a, in a book um, called "Death Is My Death Is My Ally." Ally. Interesting title, where he said that you know he found the Death Skull, and it had supernatural powers. But he never mentioned that his daughter Anna was there. But then Anna, uh, who would have been 17 years at the time in 1927, has told a story that she says that she was there with her father in Honduras in Lubantu, and. She was told by the um, people of the Maya who were helping with the dig that if she went on top of this temple, she'd get like a lovely view of the Lubantu um, city. And while she was on top of this um, temple, she looked down and she saw something reflective and she found a crystal skull. But as I said, guys, the this story has got um, holes in it. Um, a lot of people have said that they don't necessarily believe this story because, as I just mentioned, F.A. Mitchell didn't have any recordings of her being there, nor did he mention the skull, which I would imagine at that time, if he did find something like that, it'd be a big deal. Um, now, what is recorded, and what is interesting, is that this skull was supposedly bought by F.A. Mitchell in the 19... 40s at a Sotheby's auction and what Mitchell is claiming is that he um, he had to sell the skull after this finding although he didn't tell anybody um, to pay off a debt in the 1930s to a art collector and what is solid about this story is this this is actually verified or this purchase is uh, is actually conclusive that he did buy it from Sotheby's and some people say this is where he actually bought the skull from and the collector who owned it before said that he bought it from a guy who had it for several years and a guy who had it several years before that but there's no mention of F.A. Mitchell which kind of just stirs this story up a little bit for you to try and get to a conclusion to there's, there's no real sort of leads to try and get to the bottom of it so from 1940 F.A. Mitchell was in possession of this skull but he did not make any recordings of it when he was in Honduras in the civilization and then it go, gets in, goes into the hands of Anna after F.A. Mitchell then passes away 
and then you spring forward to the 1980s and then you have this documentary which is the Arthur C. Clarke documentary which does really well at that time where Anna tells this story of finding this skull with her father and I'd imagine at that time as well because what is true is that her father was this adventurer and he did go to these temples but there's no verification of Anna actually being there to find it and this is kind of where the story it becomes inconclusive as I've mentioned quite a few times on here now but um, as I've said before in previous episodes in the 1980s you had the mysteries you've had the Bermuda Triangles you've had the books and now Anna Mitchell Hedges has come out with a story to say look I was, I was with my father I found this crystal skull um, in Honduras and uh, it's on TV, on the Arthur C. Clarke uh, Mystery World, and the show does really well, and all of a sudden people are looking into this story. And now from this point onwards, I can relate to this, because I remember growing up in the 80s, and I've said before, you had the coffee table mystery books, and most of the time you'd have the crystal skull on the front of it, and you sort of, oh wow. And I remember these stories from my parents when they told me these mysteries about the, the crystal skull when it comes from South America and, you know, it, it, how, how could it have been carved, you know, 3,600 years ago in these ancient civilizations? And it's created a bit of hocus pocus and it sure felt like it, it did for me back then. So you can see how this this story can, can escalate. But it Anna's story does have the building platform because her father was an adventurer as well and I'm sure that she did join him on some of these expeditions and stuff like that although as I said it wasn't uh, recorded so this is where I guess scientists and researchers are a little bit kind of well how can we try and put get this story straight because again in in the 70s and the 80s you don't have any anything like uh, social media or the access to stuff like we, we do today. Um, but at the same time, more importantly, it's created a great, a great mystery, and I'm not, I'm not going to take that away from it, whether the, the story is true or not. Um, and as time's gone on, um, scientists have had a look at the skulls, and they've scratched their heads, and they're trying to work out how it's made. Loads of theories. Um one of the theories is it's been rubbed down with sand with uh, over 150 years to try and form this skull. And as I said, the story still still remains inconclusive. Anna lived to 100 years old and I think she passed away in 2007. She took the story to to her grave, and she stated that all her, you know throughout her life that she found it with her father in Honduras. But with the story remaining inconclusive, what I can say is it certainly has left a legacy because there are a lot of people out there who do believe in the skull, they believe in the power of it. It's created a uh, body, mind, spirit expo throughout the world where lots of people turn up. There are hundreds of replicas of this crystal skull now, so I imagine it would be difficult now to try and prove whether any of these are actually real if someone does turn up with a box and say look I found this in Mexico especially today and I think that's a lot to do with the mystery world um, throughout you know in terms of you know other mysteries such as UFOs and the Loch Ness Monster and all that sort of stuff especially where you've got like CGI and technology and stuff like that so it's I'd say it's more difficult now to try and prove whether something really is authentic or whether it isn't um, but like I say with, with the legacy the skull is now in the possession of a Californian man called Bill Bill Holman. Uh, he's a bit of a sort of Indiana Jones type character himself. And he uh, he is trying to build a museum where he can put the skull um, on display so people can, can go and see it. But, you know, quick let's have a quick rundown of this. So, as I said, uh, the, the, the skull itself, is it is it real or is it not? Uh, like I say, the evidence is very inconclusive. It makes for a great story. I can't take that away from it. Um, what I find interesting myself is that there are 
in the ancient civilizations they do mention skulls, but there's nothing looking on looking at the research that I've done, there's nothing that the ancient civilizations say, look, we had this crystal skull. But they do mention skulls, there are skulls in their architecture. And there was the performance of elongated skulls as well. Um which I think was to do with like status with priests and stuff like that. Um, but what is interesting is when, uh, even in the early, like in the 1920s, 1930s, uh, with the discovery of these crystal skulls, there was a mention of it having like supernatural powers and containing information. But what's interesting is that, as I said earlier, scientists today do use crystals for um, a, a type of computer or that type of technology, uh, which is interesting how that, that does tie up. But guys, I'm getting to the end of this show, and as always, I'd like to give you my take on it. And because this was a show which was um, a listener request from my good buddy Darren Randall. Darren, I know you're listening to this, mate, and I've got to shout this out because we were talking about this the other night, and he did make a good point, actually, and he knows more about Arthur C. Clark than I do in actual fact. And he said to me, he said, I'm, I'm really enjoying your show. But he said, do you remember watching Arthur C. Clark, and he'll build up this story, and he gets to the end of it, and he'll give you his, his take on it, and he'll come out and say, well, you do know this is all just a load of old, you know, possibly a load of old rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> and I say that lightly, that's basically the conversation that we were having, but I think what he was getting to was that Arthur C. Clarke himself would actually try and give you his uh, scientific, rational explanation to it. I didn't actually know that, but I thought I'd shout that out, Darren. But that was quite funny. It was a little conversation we had, um, <laughs> uh, which made me laugh. But, um, yeah, my, my take on this, um, it's like all these things, really, you know, for... The, the, the most important thing I'll say is it is made a really good story um, and it's a story where you can go down the road of this is this is total nonsense you know crystal skulls all this sort of stuff it's got to be a made up story and on the top of it you could think that but then when you start digging and looking into it and you look at the ancient civilizations and the mines and the step pyramids and uh, their beliefs and their cultures and the supernatural and you look at the pyramids and you look at all that stuff and I think that's I, mean, I think that's what kind of makes this story plausible and you kind of think did could they possibly add a crystal skull back then that had this technology and was there an ancient civilization of Atlantis so that's for me what broadens it out and I would actually say that until one day someone comes out and comes out with some rock solid evidence and says this is a complete hoax or they've come out and said no it's that it's real it's true it's all all tight I, I guess we'll never know but has it made a good story yeah you know it, 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 will will this story go on for a long time oh yeah I think it will so uh, <laughs> we'll just have to wait and see but I thought I'd shout that one out for you, Darren. There you go. I hope you enjoyed that. And to all you other listeners, I hope you enjoyed that show. Uh, like I say, it was... Uh, it threw me off a little bit, this one, The Crystal Sky. I've got to be honest with you. Doing all the research, it, 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 I had to really think about how I was going to try and tell this uh, story for this one. And I've no doubt that's going to happen to me again in the future of other episodes. So uh, <laughs> I, do, I do try my best, folks, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but there you go that is the fun of mysteries and that is why I do this you know it's because it it's um, the mystery world is a, is a wonderful place it gets you thinking it gets you wondering it gets you sort of thinking oh no that's, that's a ridiculous idea and then you uh, uh, and then the point you're thinking that's ridiculous and you look at something else and you think oh okay yeah that kind of I kind of get that, so that's where we go with this, and uh, I've got a load more episodes to come, and I'm sure I'm going to be going down those same avenues, so, <laughs> but more importantly, just hope you're enjoying it, guys, just as much as I am. Uh, right, so there you go, uh, what's my next episode? 
I'll be honest with you guys, I don't know. I, I haven't actually looked. I've got to the Crystal Skull. Um, I'll have a look at it. I've got a whole ton of stuff on the shelf, so I'll pick something up or surprise you. Um, but there you go. Um, the other thing I forgot to mention as well was um, the influence on movies and stuff. So we had the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, Indiana Jones. Wasn't my favourite instalment, I'll be honest with you guys, and I don't think it got a massive reception, but what it did do, and what I have noticed, that it really did um, inspire people to have a look at Crystal Skulls um, again, so that kind of sparked off this mystery. Um, but I thought I'd shout that out because I played that little introduction at the beginning of the show. Uh, so there you go. Um, Let's do a little bit of admin before I close the show. So I am a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network. So please go and check out all the other shows on there. There's some great ones. Um, also run another show called Bite Size Cinema Podcast, which I do loads of uh, movie reviews in a bite-sized type of way. Or sometimes when I have a guest on, it might just be like double or triple the bite size. Um, you can find the Mystery Vault Podcast on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube and several other players on um, the internet if you put in Bite Size, uh, not Bite Size, <laughs> that's my other show, uh, the Mystery Vault podcast and I've also got a Facebook page so that's the best place to contact me if there's any suggestions you want to put down, anything you want me to have a look at um, and that's it guys so um, as always keep it spooky Keep it safe, and I'll see you soon. I think this is a ghost story. I think this is a ghost story. enjoyed this show then make sure you check out the other great shows on the legion podcast network like cinema psyops cinema beef devour the podcast duncan and Bo come correct exploding heads horror movie podcast friday the 13th get slayed the hell Ming power hour hello this is the doom show hero hero ghost show kill the cast underwater kaiju from outer space jerry hates action legion after dark metal health obsessive cinema discourse Pick Six Movies, the podcast by The Cemetery, the podcast on Haunted Hill, the Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which Versus the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.